This is the first video for Chapter 8, Waves and Water Dynamics. I put this picture in the background. This picture is actually a very famous surf spot called Chopu. Um, it's in Tahiti. And it's one of the sort of wonders of the natural world. This is a very steep uh, wave that kind of comes out of nowhere. And the factors that make this wave um, are the ones that we're going to be talking about all this chapter. So we're sort of, you know, this will be the background image for all of the uh, screens. But this is a, you know... It's not possible to study the ocean without studying waves. So this is the next chapter for us. The book opens up um, in chapter 8 with talking about Mavericks. Mavericks is the name of a surf spot um, in Northern California uh, near Half Moon Bay. It's kind of famous if you've ever seen the movie about it. There's like a, a movie about it and then an even better documentary about it. Um, but it, it's an interesting place. And, it, and what's most interesting about it from a physical oceanography point of view is it's not supposed to exist. Uh, California has consistent waves, but it's not known for having these absolutely ginormous waves. Mavericks occasionally has some of the biggest waves um, in the northern hemisphere. Uh, it's about a half a kilometer offshore. It takes actually quite a while to, to paddle out. And we're going to be talking about wave refraction later, so uh, Mavericks has a lot to do with wave refraction. There's this deep drop-off in a rock reef, which has to do with shallow and deep water waves. Um, there's even, even seasonal difference, which has to do with fetch and wind speed. And um, it's a little famous um, because uh, Jay Moriarty is one of the kids who started surfing at Mavericks um, at a young age. He's the center of a movie about it. And on the day that uh, this video I'm going to show you, he had what was considered at the time the worst wipeout of all time uh, caught on film. You'll see. It's a pretty big drop on he wipes out. And it was also the same day Mark Fu, a world-famous surfer, died. So it was kind of like a big deal in the surfing world. Let's see if I can get this to play. Uh, Jay's coming in from the right. He's about 15 at the time. And I don't know if you could tell from the video, but that was about a 30-foot drop. It has a very large wave and a lot of white water. He does come up. He makes it. So good for him. If we're going to talk about waves, um, I'm sure you've talked about waves ad nauseum in physics. Uh, we're going to get right to the parts that are different in oceanography as quick as we can. Waves are caused by something that disturbs the ocean surface. Um, energy is transferred somehow, something as, as simple as a pebble falling in water. The energy of its fall is transmitted to the water and that spreads out and those are waves. Uh, the waves that we talk about in the ocean, almost all of them are caused by wind uh, or storms. Um, at transferring energy um, via friction to the wave surface. There are three main interfaces of waves. Um, air water, which is the most common. Those are ocean waves. Those are most of the waves we're going to be talking about. Air air waves are called atmospheric waves. You may have heard of them as um, fronts. As a matter of fact, tonight there's a big front moving through. Atmospheric waves can be very, very large, um, but they're not very dense, so we don't really pay much attention to them. And then one of the more interesting ones, which we're actually going to talk about first, um, you may have never seen before. It's called an internal wave. Internal waves occur between two fluids. Um, and I actually have a wave bottle in my classroom that I'll let you guys play with tomorrow where you can visualize internal waves. So um, this is a picture right out of your book. And it's uh, supposed to sort of show you what internal waves look like. And the scale here is about right. So at the surface waves, uh, we would have what I would consider ripples moving along the surface. Um, and energy is transferred along um, from the air to the water, occasionally from the water to the air. And we have um, water at the surface. We talked about this already. Surface water, that mixed layer, is a lower density of water than the water, that deep um, ocean water. And you, they have a barrier between them, um, the picnic line. So the internal waves occur along the picnic line, and they can actually be much, much larger and frequently are much larger than the surface waves. So like in the picture here, it looks like it's about three or four times bigger. That That's about right. Um, they can be much, much larger than the largest waves at the surface of the ocean. I love this picture. A lot of people think it's just, um, you know, surface waves. This is a photo of internal waves. Now, this is a photo, um, a computer-generated image, really, that was taken using uh, what's called MODIS. MODIS is it's this last bullet down here. Uh, right down here. MODIS. 
MODIS stands for Moderate Range Image Spectral Radiometer. It's a, it's a instrument aboard two satellites, the Terra and the Aqua, um, which are used, they can actually see below the ocean's surface, just like air is transparent to our, you know, uh, visual the first layer of lower density water is transparent to MODIS. So MODIS can look through that first layer of water and it actually sees the internal waves below. Now, what we're looking at here is a picture um, in the Philippine Sea, um, the Sulu Sea. The, uh, the Palawan is one of the western islands in the Philippines, and it's pretty big. It's about the size of Florida. So the, this image here, this is like basically Florida, and the scale of these waves that you can see coming towards it are absolutely ginormous. They can literally be bigger than 100 meters. Um, internal waves weren't known to exist in, um, until physical oceanographers found them, and they can be caused by almost any disturbing force. Um, but one of the things that really was alarming is that they are a huge hazard to submarines. Um, they are known to, you know, if a submarine is traveling along the picnic line, um, it's possible for this in these internal waves to break on top of them. It's, it's like a hundred foot wave breaking on top of a ship. Um, they, they they're known to be sub killers. Um, so people are are paying more and more attention to internal waves. You can actually tell when there are internal waves at the surface um, by these slicks of debris. The slicks of debris are frequently called Langmuir circulation. We'll talk about that later on. There are other types of waves uh, frequently named for their disturbing force. There are many many ways to classify waves. The splash wave um, is caused by things just falling into the ocean. Um, landslides, uh, icebergs, meteorites, like the one that wiped out the dinosaur. Splash waves are functionally as big as whatever caused them. Um, and they are frequently, um, they cause tsunamis. Uh, there's seismic sea waves, uh, which are the classic tsunami. These are caused by tectonic activities, specifically the seafloor moving, frequently up or down, but um, you can have underwater landslides or volcanic eruptions that also can cause them. Other waves, though, I don't think we really talk about them often as waves until you get to this class. Tides are waves. Um, tides are actually two waves, uh, two wave crests moving around the Earth. Ship waves, uh, wake, um, you've seen before on the really large boats, the wake can be absolutely ginormous. And we've caused waves through detonating nuclear devices like at the Bikini Islands. So there are lots and lots of ways to classify waves. This is just a way of classifying them based on what uh, caused them. We're going to talk about how waves move. We're going to do this uh, just the first part of 8.2. So it, it's really important to remember that waves are energy and they are not actually the movement of particles. When you look at ocean waves, I know it looks like the water is moving, um, but we'll see a bunch of diagrams that show it's really just the water is transferring energy to the particle next to it, not so much that the particle is moving. Um, Waves move through um, almost every medium, depending on the type of wave. We'll talk about the three main types. So now we're going to classify waves based on how they move. And ocean waves are orbital waves, and we'll talk about those in greater detail in the next video. This diagram uh, kind of has a lot going on, but it's kind of an important diagram. This is how we classify waves based on their period and about the amount of energy. So this first, uh, we have wave period um, along here increasing wave period from as short as a tenth of a second up to hour, uh, 24 hours, basically an entire day. And then right along here we have wave energy. Uh, you can see that the wave energy sort of peaks around um, in the second range, and then there are more peaks in the long range, the 12 hour and the 24 hour. Um, and that's kind of normal. What, what's also interesting about this is, is if we're looking at wave period, tides have the longest wave period uh, with either 12 hours or 24 hours between the waves. Um, and as you remember, wave period is the time from uh, for one wave to pass a certain point and then the next wave. Tsunamis can also have very long um, periods as well. Um, the larger the tsunami, the longer the wave period. And then wind-generated waves. It is very rare for a wind-generated wave to get a wave period of five minutes. But it does occur, especially when we have very long distances those wind-generated waves have traveled over. Um, places like Hawaii will occasionally see that. Okay, um, so waves move. 
Um, and we sort of talked about this already. They transmit energy. They move up and down or back and forth, around and around. So let's talk about the, the let's talk about the progressive waves first. Progressive waves are waves that you're probably more familiar with from physics. They're sound waves and light waves. They don't break, so we're not talking about water waves here, but you still need to know them. And the main two that we're going to talk about before we just commit to water waves is longitudinal and transverse. So longitudinal waves are those um, that are a push-pull sort of um, movement. And the what you need to know here is that the energy moves in the same direction as um, what the disturbance was that started it. So the disturbance moves in sort of um, the parallel direction as the, ener as the wave progresses. It's important um, to remember which type of matter they move through. Um, I always remember that longitudinal um, ends in AL, which is like all. Uh, longitudinal waves move through all states of matter. Transverse waves, the, the initial disturbing force is at a right angle to the, the energy that progresses in the wave. Um, it's that can, like, kind of rippling wave. And transverse waves only move through solids. These are sort of more like uh, the waves you would expect with an earthquake. And then orbital waves we'll talk about in the next video. So here's a kind of a cool video. We're going to watch the transverse wave is at the top and the longitudinal wave is at the bottom. And you'll see the disturbing force and the direction of the wave. So watch the video. Transverse wave, the initial force is like kind of flicking a rope, moves up and down. Let me see if I can start that again. Let me go back. This, all right, there we go. And the, both waves move uh, across the screen, but the longitudinal wave, the force that started it, moved in the same direction of the wave, while the transverse wave, it moves in the opposite. So that's where we're going to stop for this video. We'll do orbital waves on the next one.